teaches what's to come a lot and look you know the signs and and you're right it can be confusing you know Ooh, somebody got their saved by grace up what was that somebody got their saved by grace back up I was just I oh you know what happened <laughs> i accidentally so i signed in to another time when i was on here and i think it the other one didn't save it. Then I was like, I gotta find, am I in the wrong thing? And then sure enough, there it was. So I was like, yay, God is good. And I said, Lord, let me find this. And he's good, right? Amen. So we're gonna go into prayer and then um, we'll, we'll touch a little bit on why I sent that to you last night and where we're going with it. And kind of goes into a little bit about tonight's Bible study. Um, Good evening, um, everyone, Facebook, YouTube, Zoom. It is our Tuesday night, Saved by Grace Bible Studies. We thank you for attending. We pray that you get the blessings of the understanding and wisdom of the word as we go into prayer. Heavenly Father, I thank you, Lord, that you have allowed us again for all of us to be here. I could see we're all a little little tired lord today has been a very uh productive very fruitful day father but we are still here lord to get our understanding of your word to carry us through the rest of the week father i pray that your wisdom and your spiritual insight that the spiritual eyes of their understanding the spiritual eyes that taps into the spirit that is in them, that the Holy Spirit is ministering to, that, that they will grow in that spiritual insight, wisdom, and knowledge, and understanding. I present myself to you, as always, to be used by you for your purpose and your purpose only. In Jesus' name, amen. So, uh, good evening, brothers and sisters. Nick, Nick, Paul, Bernadette. Mom, God bless you all. Uh, just a quick uh, reminder um, that after this month, um, I'm not going to be sending out the videos and reminders. It, it, it's, it's, it's a lot. And um, at this point, we've been up and running for probably 13 months right now. So those of us that have been here um have stayed we we know what time and what day bible study is um by the blessings people on facebook they're able to come on um and that's again you know there's a lot of technology that's going with all this but um i'm looking at where we're at in this life, I was sharing with my mom today, it's kind of hard to even plan for a future. The way that the world is going, the way things are going, the way people are even missing it. Like, the, you know, my mom was sharing yesterday about, you know, about uh, Russia and China. And, you know, we talked about this, Russia, China, uh, Japan, America, the Babylon, we, we and somehow we're back here, you know, God, like what happened in Revelation 12 last night, um, there's so much more in there that's leading into Revelation chapter 13 that it's easier for me, believe it or not, when I do them like that because I'm able just to go. Like I don't have no one watching or questions, so it's easier for me and I think it's a little more educational for me to break each scripture down as I go. Um, but I want to share tonight's Bible study because it was very strange the way it came. And I think that it's something we all need to hear. I think we need to start really paying attention to what's taking place around us and really be able to line it up with the word of God. So for those of you, I hope that you have printed this out. If you haven't, um, we're going to be reading John chapter 20, verse 19. And then we're going to read John chapter 1, verse 11. And then Exodus chapter 20, verse 2. 
And then Luke chapter 4, verse 8. Oh, uh, what are uh, two? There's three more. John chapter 17, verse 23. 1 John 5, 7. And then Acts 1, 8. Now, there's, I, I really ask you to, when I send this to you guys like a day or two before, I try not to send it to where you guys get into this really full blown study for yourself until I break it down for you. And then you can kind of go on your journey and see where God takes you. But I send this to you so you can understand where I'm going and how I'm breaking it down. So the title is The Divide, the, the divide Amongst Jews and Gentiles and the Divide Amongst Christians Today. Uh, I don't know what led me here, but it was very, well, I do know it was one scripture, but the one scripture was in my devotional. And I want, I, I think it's very important for us to see what happened in the Old Testament that's happening now. Because the Bible says there's nothing new under the sun. What has been will be again, and what is to come has already been. I want us to see this together. And so... In John chapter 20, verse 19, it says, then the, same, then the same day at evening, being the first day of the week, which is Sunday, when the doors were shut where the disciples were assembled for fear of the Jews, came Jesus and stood in the midst and said unto them, Peace be unto you. Now, do you see the divide between the disciples and the Jewish people? This divide is because, and this is something that I really ask you guys, if you want to get a clearer understanding, to read Romans chapter 11. We broke Romans chapter 11 down before. But the, the disciples are Christians. The Jewish people are Hebrew. Their battle was, who is this Jesus? There was only focus on God because they only knew God. When they thought of the Messiah coming, they didn't think of Jesus being the Messiah because everything stayed the same. But there was a divide amongst the people. And the interesting part is this divide was God's people against God's people. I, I really want you to understand what I just said. Think about what I just said. There was a divide between God's people and God's people. This divide came because of Jesus. So we had the Christians that were following Christ, the Messiah, but we had the Jewish people who didn't believe that Christ was the Messiah, but both parties were into the God that we all serve. But the Jewish people couldn't understand that Jesus was the Messiah. And if you read chapter 11, I really want you to go back and read Romans chapter 11, you're going to see the Jewish and the Christians in that whole chapter. And you're going to see how this had to happen because God was taking the, the he was ungrafting the Jews because they didn't believe in Jesus and was allowing the, the Gentiles, which is us, to be engrafted into this, into the vine so that they later on will be engrafted back. What a lot of people don't understand is that when the Jewish nation starts to fall back into understanding that Jesus Christ is the Messiah, that's when you're going to see a really big thing start to take place. Matter of fact, Paul, when Paul, this Paul on, on here, our brother Paul, when he mentioned about Revelations 12, I was sharing this with my mom today. I want to read you guys something from Revelations 12. In Revelation 12, you don't have to go there, but I'm going to read Revelation 12, chapter, chapter 12, verse 13. 
Now when the dragon saw that he had, had been cast to the earth, he persecuted the woman who gave birth to the male child. That woman, again, we know is Jerusalem. That male child is Christ. Verse 14. But the woman was given two wings of a great eagle that she might fly into the wilderness in the wilderness to her place where she is nourished for a time and times and a half a time for the from the presence of the serpent. And you have to understand that time, that two more times and a half a time is three and a half years. When we think about the seven-year tribulation, for three and a half years, there's going to be peace. But you have to understand something. Everything that's going to take place, that where all this stuff is going to happen, is in the Holy Land. So as these Jewish people in chapter 11 are going to be engrafted back in, that's when the Jewish people and the Christian people are both going to recognize Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. This great thing is going to happen in the Holy Land. And a lot of people don't understand. If you look at what's taking place now with England, China, Russia, the Holy Land, everything is happening over there. So everything that's taking place over there, we need to pay attention to over here. Because everything that's happening over there is going to kick off the end. And a lot of people don't get that. A lot of people watching sports. A lot of people getting their jollies. A lot of people going to work. But nobody's paying attention to what's going on except God's people. Those of us that are like, hey, man, we need to pay attention to what's going on there because there's already been prophecy that's been fulfilled in the past times about the Jews getting back their own nation. And that happened, I think it was in 1950. So we have to understand that these prophecies that are coming, these things are happening now. Christians feared the Jews that are Hebrew. That's the next line under there. Christians feared the Jews and the Hebrews. Now the disciples were afraid of the Jewish people. And the funny thing was that Paul the Apostle was a Hebrew of Hebrews. He was a Jew. He was a Roman. And he was killing Christians thinking he was honoring God. So he was fighting for the God that he believed in, but not understanding that he was trying to kick against the prick of Jesus until Jesus met him on the road to Damascus. So a lot of people don't really get the concept that Paul wasn't trying to be a Christian killer. He actually thought he was doing what he was supposed to do to protect and honor God. Under that, I wrote, the Jews, God's chosen people, were the ones killing Christians. Those who stood for Jesus, the Son of God. Get that. The Jewish people, who were the chosen people of God, were killing Christians. So it's like the Jewish people said, we're going to take flight on the, on the Christians. We're going to kill them because they're mocking God. They're blaspheming. This Jesus isn't God, yet they're killing us. And then if you look at the way the world is going, where do you think the Holocaust was? That was killing Jews. It flipped itself. I want us to see. I'm, I'm really trying to get us to walk down how nothing new is under the sun. God's people have been being persecuted from day one. The Jews, Hebrews, the Jews slash Hebrews, were hated by Roman Catholics. And the Christians were hated by the Jewish people. You, do you see this great divide? I'm trying to get people to see the division. The Romans, Catholic Church were against the Jewish people. The Jewish people were against the Christian people. Now, if you look at the Catholicism, you look at the Jewish, and you look at the Christians, we're all supposed to be serving the same guy. But yet, we're divided. 
I, I want you to see this because if you get along a true Catholic, they'll tell you, well, I ain't a Christian, I'm Catholic. And if you get around a Jewish person, they'll tell you, I'm not from the Roman Catholic Church, I'm from the Jewish Church, and I don't believe, I don't follow the same Jesus that Christians follow, the divine. I, I'm wanting you to see this. And you're probably saying, what is, what's the importance of this? You have to understand something. There's only one guy, and there's only supposed to be one church. There's not supposed to be. And we're going to see the differences of the divide that's going on right now and what God is not happy about. We're going to read the part. I hope you have this paper. I really do. For those of you on Facebook that don't have this paper, I, I really wish you would focus on this because it's very important that you pause what you have so you can get an understanding of what we're reading here. Past divisions of God's people through religion and fear and evil control. Now, if you have a piece of paper, which I hope you do, I want you to write down Jewish. And then next to that, I want you to write Jehovah Witness. And then under that, I want you to write Romans. And next to that, I want you to put the Catholic Church. Then under that, I want you to write Christian and write believers and followers. Now, a lot of people don't like to tap into this, but you need to understand something. Christianity is an actual relationship with the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Please, I'm, I'm going to upset a lot of people here. I already know this. Catholicism follows Jesus but worships the Virgin Mary, which God said, you shall worship no other God but me. If you look at most of our culture that are followers of the Catholic Church, they're not really following and worshiping Jesus Christ. They're following and worshiping the Virgin Mary. If you look at Christianity, we are the only spiritual religion, for a better choice of words, that follows the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and we know that they're all one. The Jehovah Witnesses do not believe that God the Father, Jesus the Son, and the Holy Spirit are all the same person. So you see the differences of these different religions. And God said, if you don't believe that I am in the Son and the Son is in me, you're, you're, not, you're not worthy. Because people fail to understand that God took on the form of a human being by becoming his Son and died for all of us. So when he died, he wanted the rest of the world to understand, in order for you to come to me, you have to believe what I, the Lord, the Father God, did in the flesh through my son Jesus. So you have to take Jesus as your Lord and Savior to get back to me because he died in your place. So he has paid the price for you. But if you go to a Catholic church, they have a concept of that, but they'll still tell you about going to the Virgin Mary. If you get in San Francisco, every now and then, you'll see that they block off the streets for people to carry the Virgin Mary's picture from one end of the city all the way to the other end of the city. What are you doing? You don't have Jesus Christ up there. You have the Virgin Mary up there. That is not Bible. And so what I'm trying to see is the divide. When people go, I'm not a Christian, I'm Catholic. I'm not a Catholic, I'm Christian. I'm neither one of those. I'm a Jehovah Witness. We have a divide in the church. Not only do we have a divide in the church, we don't have unity. And because we don't have unity, you need to understand what the Bible said. It said a church that is divided cannot stand. 
So we have so much division going on, and that's just in three different race and religions that I'm talking about. Wait till we see the big division amongst Christianity. The Jewish people equals Jehovah Witnesses. God, Jesus, and the Holy Ghost are not all the same in their eyes. Now, I want you to go to John chapter 1, verse 11. John chapter 1, verse 11. And I really need you to understand the concept of this because what's happening is that the devil has this, this wedge between God's people. If the, if the Jews are having a... Man, just don't move from John. Don't move from John. Just stay there for a minute. I want to show you something. I'm going to show you something. I want you guys to see why this is important. So in Romans chapter 11, it says, verse 11, I say then, have they stumbled that they should fall? Certainly not. But through their fall to provoke them to jealousy, salvation has come to the Gentiles. This is the separation where God is saying the Jewish people have been put to the side so that the Christian people, the Gentiles, can be brought in. Verse 12. Now, if their fall is rich, now if their fall is riches for the world and their failure riches for the Gentiles, how much more their fullness? For I speak to you Gentiles, inasmuch as I am, <coughs> excuse me, an apostle of the Gentiles, I magnify. My ministry, if I by any means I am provoked to jealousy, those who are my those who are my flesh and save some for them. Uh, it goes on to say right here in verse 19, you will say then, you will say then, branches were broken off that I might be grafted in. Well said. Because of unbelief, they were broken off, and you stand by faith. Do not be haughty, but fear. For if God did not spare the natural branches, he may not spare you either. So what he's saying here, I really want you to get, this is not just some sermon. I'm trying to get you guys to understand something here. God's Jewish people, the chosen generation, the chosen people, God's chosen, who he said, I have anointed you to go bring this word forth. They did not believe in Jesus. So since they didn't believe in Jesus, God said, I'm going to break you off. You're the branch. I'm breaking you off. And I'm sending Paul, the apostle, to speak this word to the Gentiles, who is us. All of us on here, we believed. So now that we believe, we are grafted in. What are we waiting for, brothers and sisters? I hope you get this. We are waiting for the engrafting of the Jewish people back into the same vine. Once the Jewish people come back into that vine because they believe in Jesus and they know he's our Lord and Savior, then God has now completed the two in one that he talks about. He says, I want to take the two men and make them one. He's talking about the Jews and the Gentiles together. When that happens, he has gotten all his people. What's happening right now, if you look at a lot of the Jews, you got Jews, uh, Jews for Jesus. You got all these Jewish people that are now recognizing Jesus. And the people, the reason people don't talk about what I'm sharing with you is because people don't care. They like the divide. And, and I'm going to tell you, at least 90% of the people on here and listening to this message were raised in a Catholic church. So was I. And so because we were in the religion, remember, religion is man-made. I could take you through the Bible and show you things that the Catholicism has held people in bondage that Christianity has set people free from. 
The Bible never said to go pray to the Virgin Mary. And 1 John 1, 9, it says, pray to the Father who is able to forgive you. He never said go pray to the Virgin Mary. He never said go pray to St. Paul. He never said go pray to St. Peter. Why? Because then you can pray to St. Ronnie. You can pray to St. Nikki. You can pray to St. Paul. You can pray to St. Bernard. You can pray to all of us because we're saints. What he was saying here is don't get off of the what the actual topic is, which is Jesus Christ. And so what happens when the division comes, when the Roman Catholics took over, they took over by force. They took over by making the Pharisees and Sadducees made, I think it was 5,000 extra commandments that they wanted people to follow, that they would control the people. When you go to church, they never you, you never had to go to church to how you commit your confirmation and your communion so you could take communion. Taking communion is you coming into one ship with the with the sufferings, the stripes, the beatings, and the crucifixion of Jesus. But Catholicism changed that. When it talks about going and praying to the man that is on the other side of the black uh, curtain and you're telling him your sins, you're telling another person who sins your sins and he's telling you to, how to get forgiven, but God said, why are you going to him? You're supposed to go to me. So this division and these things that are happening, they've been happening for years, brothers and sisters, and God is trying to get everybody back on the same page. So when you look at John chapter 1, verse 11, it says, he came, please get this, because this is what I was just saying. He came to his own, and his own did not receive him. He's talking about the Jewish people. He said, I came to my own folks, the ones that I chose, my Jewish Hebrew people. I came to them, and they rejected me. But I went to the Gentiles, and they embraced me. So when he came to the Gentiles, he said, okay, well... I'm going to ungraft, I'm going to cut off these branches over here because they don't believe me, not understanding that I came to die in their place. I'm wondering what happened but to them, but Jesus understood that in the Old Testament, it said that the veil was still over their eyes. And if you read in Isaiah, if you read in the Old Testament, it's always talking about the coming of the Messiah that was going to die for their sins, that was going to take on all of their sins onto himself. It talked about it in Genesis. It talked about it in Isaiah. It talked about it through the whole Bible, but yet they were blinded to it. So when Jesus finally showed up, just like what's happening now, People don't believe, oh, Jesus is coming back. Oh, Jesus, you guys been saying that for years. Man, there ain't no Jesus coming back. But those of us that have this relationship with him are like, um, you know, that stuff that's in this book that you say is not man written? You realize this stuff is happening right now? See, we see it. And the Bible says he'll give them over to delusions because that's what they want to see. Roman equals the Catholic Church religion, religion controlled by the church. Worship, Nebuchadnezzar, Caesar, the Virgin Mary, these were all people that people worshipped. Nebuchadnezzar built a statue and said, if you don't bow down to the statue, then you're going to be put into the flames of fire. Nebuchadnezzar stood up on the mountain and said, look at this great kingdom that I built. He kept leaving God out. He became his own God, wanted him to be worshipped. Caesar, Caesar became the, 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 the Pharaoh. He was running stuff. You got to bow down to me. The Bible even said, give to Caesar what belongs to Caesar, Caesar and to God what belongs to God. These people were getting caught up in their own fame and fortune. And then here comes the Virgin Mary. Where in the world do you see in the Bible that anything says about worshiping the Virgin Mary? Matter of fact, if you look at your Bible in Luke chapter 1, Mary herself, and believe you me, this was not part of the sermon, but Mary herself said, oh, please let me find it, Lord. I got to turn it in my old Bible because these pages are still sticking together because it's new. Uh, 
Then Mary said, Behold, the maid servant of the Lord, let it be, let it be according to your word. And the angel departed from her. But over here it says in verse 31, it says, And behold, you will conceive in your womb and bring forth a son and shall call his name Jesus. He will be great and, and will be called the son of the highest. And the Lord God will give him the throne of his father David. And he will reign over the house of Jacob forever. And of, and of his kingdom, there will be no end. Now, this is happening in the gospel. This is being told to Mary. Now, you would think if it's written in the same Bible that they're reading, that they would understand, hey, they're talking about this guy named Jesus, this Messiah, and Mary's having this baby. Verse 34, then Mary said to the angel, how can this be, since I do not know a man? And the angel answered and said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the highest will overshadow you. Therefore also that Holy One who is to be born will be called the Son of God. How could you get any simpler than that this child that mary is having is going to be the son of the living god his name is emmanuel god with us where do you find any confusion that they're saying to glorify mary in any of this then it goes on to verse uh, 36 now indeed elizabeth your relative has also conceived a son in her old age and this is now the sixth month for her who was called barren. For with God, nothing will be impossible. Then Mary said, Behold, the maid servant of the Lord, let it be to you according to, let it be to me according to your word. And the angel departed. Now Mary arose and went the day's journey to Elizabeth. Now I'm showing you that. Because I want you to see, someone created this worshiping of the Virgin Mary because she carried Jesus. Now, if this woman was to be worshipped, then God contradicted himself when he said, no one shall worship no one else but me, no other gods shall you have before me. And then it goes on to even say in the Bible, when Mary went up to Jesus and said, they have no wine here, Jesus didn't say, oh, great Mary, virgin of my mother, of my womb. He said, woman, what does this have to do with me? What son, what God, what savior would call someone so special woman? That's like me going to my mom and saying, listen, woman, that's disrespectful. But he put her back in her place and reminded her that you was only a vessel being used to bring me here. I am no longer your son, but I am your savior. So where do we get this worshiping of the virgin? Catholic religion. And most of that ver that whole thing is not even in Old Testament. That's something that a lot of the Latinos and Filipino culture brought in because someone started that worshiping the Virgin Mary. And I, I remember my daughter, she went to Catholic school. She said that they looked at the Virgin Mary as this like holy grail that carried Jesus in her. So she had to be special, but she's dead. What's so special about her? We, we carry the Holy Ghost in us. We carry Jesus in us. So if you look at Exodus 20, Exodus 20, verse 2. And it's sad because wait till we really see just how bad it has gotten from then. Exodus 20, verse 2. I am the Lord. <laughs> this is so cool. I am the Lord, your God, who
who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. He did it. No one else did it. He made it clear. I am the Lord your God. And I brought you out of this bondage. He's telling us who he is. If you go to Luke chapter 4, we was just there. Luke chapter 4, and we're going to read verse 8. And it's amazing because it's like, what I've come to know is like, and you could jump in and correct me if you're wrong, but I went to Catholic school for years. I hardly ever saw a Bible in the pew. But I saw a miscellet. And I would get this paper and we would say the scripture that the guy they called the father, the priest, would speak on that one scripture. But very solemnly, did you see anybody going and reading the Bible? So the relationship that was with Jesus was being taught how to be. Oh no, go, for, go worship the Virgin Mary. Oh no, go pray, pray to St. Christopher. Go pray to St. Paul. Go light that candle over there. All this was ri ritual, never relationship. So when you got around those Catholics that actually read the Bible, they had a different concept of this whole walk with God because they understood, wait a minute, there's stuff you're asking us to do in the church that the Bible's not asking us to do. But because they was caught up in the ritual and the religious doctrines, they kept going to the Catholic church, but they had this battle going on within them because they understood things in the church that weren't going right. So when Christianity came along, look at what happened to a lot of us. We said, wait a minute, these... These folks are following the Jesus in the Bible. These folks are talking about the same God we're talking. Man, you know, they, they seem to have a better understanding. So that's what happened. And all we're trying to do is get everybody saying, hey, we all need to be following Jesus. We don't have to have these great divides in this Christian walk. For, uh, Luke chapter 4, verse 8. Therefore, Therefore, go bear fruit worthy of repentance and do not begin to say to yourselves, we have Abraham as our father. For I say to you that God is able to raise up children from Abraham from these stones. What you have to understand is they used to think father Abraham we're of Moses. Do you know the New Testament? Paul made it clear. He said, some of you are of Apollo. Some of you are of Paul. He goes, Jesus wasn't divided. Hello? Jesus wasn't divided. One of us plants. One of us waters. But God brings the increase. I'm trying to get everybody to see this divide. This divide is still happening today. Now, I pray you have your papers. I really do. For those of you that are on Facebook, I want you to look real close to this. Those of you that are on YouTube, I want you to look real close where I wrote Christianity. So, this is where we're going to see the divide amongst now. Now, I'm going to show you some churches here that you're not going to believe. Christianity. Now, we're talking about Christians. And I'm going to tell you, Rather you're on Facebook, YouTube, or here, you fall up one of these one of these categories. You got a Baptist Christian, you got a Protestant Christian, you got an Apostolic Christian, you got a Catholic Christian, and then you got an Assemblies of God church. That's one, two, three, four, five. That's five different Christian churches. How is that possible? Explain to me why is, why, how is there this great divide? How is the Baptist teaching Jesus one way? How is the Apostolic Church Jesus, preaching Jesus this way? How is the Assemblies of God preaching them this way? We have this divide amongst the body of Christ, brothers and sisters. 
We have a divide in the church. That's why we can't stand. If we all was to come together and just sat together and said, we need to follow one God, the Bible, and we all need to come together, we would have strength and God would be able to move. Do you understand when they was in the upper room, all of them on the same accord? Same accord means they were all in agreement. We're all in agreement that we're, we want to understand, we want to know this God, and God is looking down going, whoa, they're all on the same accord. If you don't believe me, what do you think happened to the Tower of Babel? God said, unless I confuse them, they will get to the heaven because they're all in agreement. They're all of the same mind. And so that's what God is looking for. We don't, no one wants to talk about this stuff. You go, oh, I go to Baptist church. Oh, I'm a, I'm a Christian. Oh, I'm a Protestant. Oh, I'm of Assemblies of God. Oh, I tongue talk. Oh, I don't believe in tongue talking. What do you mean? Oh, are the apostles of the church? You don't even have the Holy Ghost because you don't even see. You see the divide? So you don't speak a tongue, so you're not saved. Wow, really? Okay. And the Baptist, the way they preach, it's like if you don't, uh, 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 you know, uh, it's like, hold on. Let Jesus' Holy Spirit do what he's supposed to do. Um, Matthew chapter 12. Matthew chapter 12. Now we're going to read verse 22. Now, before all of you that know me and don't know me and YouTube and Facebook and wherever else this thing goes. If there's a, something going on inside you, like who is this man to say this? I have taken you through scripture. Not only have I taken you through scripture, but I've told you about the five different denominations. Oh, I forgot. I am, there's, I'm non-denominational. That's six. Look at that. I mean, how is this possible? There's only one God. And, he, and, and, and his name is Jesus. And he came to earth and died for the earth and said, follow me. He didn't say follow the Baptist. He didn't say follow the Protestant. He said, follow me. He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Not Paul, not Ronnie, not the Apostle Paul, not Timothy, not the Virgin Mary, not Sister Sylvia, but me, Jesus. I'm, I'm the way. So how do you find out about this way? Get into my word because I am the word. And so I became the word and then I became flesh so that that way my word could get into you and you and your flesh can live for me. And you don't have to think about what type of denomination you are. You are a child of the Most High God. Where in the Bible do you see the six denominations that I just talked about? Oh, well, the Baptist came from John the Baptist. No, they didn't. John the Baptist was his name. Where did Protestant come from? Where did Lutheran come from? Those are man-made names to control the way that things are going. There's one God. When we all go to heaven, those of us that are going, there's not going to be a Baptist section, a Christian section, a non-denominal section, a no-tongue-talking section. We're all going to be under one God, one jurisdiction, and we're all going to be brothers and sisters. We're not even having marriage and children in heaven. Why do you think we call each other's brothers and sisters now? Those of you that are married, if you die with your mate, you're going to walk into heaven and you're going to turn around and say, man, brother, we made it. I know, sister, look at the Lord. You're not going to say, oh, Mr. and Mrs. Jesus ain't going to go up to Nikki and Robert and say, hey, Mr. and Mrs., Come to this side. This is where the married people are. Oh, those of you that are engaged, you're over there. Oh, the singles, 
He's not going to do all that. We're brothers and sisters, and Jesus made it clear in the Bible when he said, well, this guy was married to seven different wives. Which one of them is going to be his? He said, you got this thing all messed up. You're going to not be with any of them. These are your sisters. Remember, marriage and sex was to procreate. It wasn't to last forever. <sighs> all right. Christianity. Believer. Oh, we already read that. Sorry. So, we have these five different things. Matthew chapter 12, verse 22. Man, this is good. I'm telling you, man. I, I Just the fact that, you know, wow, like, what is wrong with all of us thinking the way we do? Verse 22. Then one was brought to him who was demon-possessed, blind and mute, and he healed him. So that he, so that the blind and the mute man both spoke. Oh, hold on, that that's not right. I am sorry, that is not right. I'm, I'm missing a scripture. Please forgive me. I am so sorry. I'm gonna have to get back to you on that, but I will get. I will return. Next, down to there. I want you to see something about Satanism. Antichrist. Satanism. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I thank you, Lord. Matthew 12, verse 25. Verse 25. My apologies, brothers and sisters. Matthew chapter 12, verse 25. But Jesus knew their thoughts and said to them, Every kingdom against itself is brought to desolation, and every city or house divided against itself will not stand. Now, how is it that we have six different denominations that are divided when God is saying in his own word written in red that this is going to bring a division, this is going to bring a great fall, and that's happening now? I, 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 I ask, I, you don't believe me? Go to an apostolistic church and tell them you don't speak in tongues. And they're going to say, we need to lay hands on you. Because if you don't pray in tongues, you don't have the Holy Spirit. It's like, where did you get that from? And I know because I've been to an apostolistic church. And they said that in one of the young ladies that was coming to the Saved by Grace Bible study at the time was crushed because she loved the Lord. I, I, I still remember the day and I'm like, oh no, wait a minute. That And I called my pastor. I was a minister at the time. I said, Pastor, this pastor done, I told him what happened. He goes, what are you being led to do? I go, I'm being led to go show him scripture. He goes, then go show him scripture. So I went up to the pastor. I said, excuse me. I said, can you explain something to me? He's like, sure, my brother. What would you like? And, and I'm like, well, how is it you're going to tell that girl over there she don't got the Holy Ghost because she don't speak in tongues? He goes, because that's the evidence. I go, that's the evidence. But if you go into the book of Corinthians and you go to chapter 12, it talks about all these different operations of the Holy Spirit. So how could you tell this girl that she don't have the Holy Ghost because she don't speak in tongues? And I had to go show the girl the scripture to revitalize her spirit because she was crushed. And a lot of times what happens, and this is why I'm so adamant to you guys about walking in the spirit. Because when you tell someone you're a Christian... And you go live in the way the world does, you confuse the world, you confuse the people in the world thinking, why do I want to be a Christian when your Christian walk is just like mine? What's the purpose of going to be a Christian if I I, I don't need to be a Christian to do that? That's the bad part. That's why people don't want to be Christians, because Christians aren't really doing this. 
Satanism, Antichrist, devil worshiping, Satanic followers, Scientology, man in his own God. That's what it is. When you have devil worship, those are Satan followers. They, they showed on TV the other day, I forgot what state it's in, but after school, they have a satanic daycare after school where kids, teenagers get to go to this place after school and learn about satanic worship. Now, if the devil ain't hiding in plain, he ain't hiding in plain sight no more. He's exposing himself. And he's like, I got my own followers. I'm like Jesus. They're worshiping me. They're teaching their kids how to worship me. They're letting their little girls and boys turn their sexual orientation around. Man, I'm doing good. I mean, he's looking up at God going, these, these are your children. Two of them are movie stars. I saw it on TV the other day. Um, the, the girl and the man, one was from the, the girl from uh, um, 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 Transformers, the very first one. And the second one, and then the guy that used to play on 90210, they have a little two little boys and a little girl, and, and, and the guy asked, well, what's so bad if my little boy wants to dress up like a little girl? I don't see nothing wrong with it. If you go into the Bible, it says men who used to dress like women is an abomination to the Lord. And see what happens when we start sharing, sharing this stuff? People think, oh, you are one of those serious Bible thumpers. No, we just know the truth. And we're trying to tell you the truth. So you don't like us because we're telling the truth of the Bible, but you don't have to like us because the Bible says you're not going to. But I'm going to expose to you your error in hopes that you get it right. You don't have to like me. I tell people all the time. You don't pay my rent. You don't live with me. You don't sleep with me. I don't date you. How are you going to have any nerve to tell me anything? Why would you even be mad at me? Don't hang around me. Don't talk to me. Don't watch me on social media. Don't do none of that. You're look, the, there's a part of you that wants to know the truth, and that's that fight. That's up to you. But as long as I'm here, I'm going to share this. Thank you for showing me that scripture, Lord. Scientology is devil worshiping because it's man is glorifying his own God. Scientology are all these movie stars that glorify themselves. They have their own religion. And, and it's interesting because when you look at uh, uh, New Wave, New Wave is actually ag agnostic. Agnostic doesn't believe that there is a God. There's just, we're just here. That's it. And then you have, and, and, and before all of you take this out of context, Muslims follow Allah. But not all Muslims are into killing like some Muslims are. Because I, I know a lot of them. But you have to understand something. And you really have to get this. And you could, I, I never hide. It's not the first time I've talked about religious spirits. But if God said in the Holy Bible, you shall have no other God beside me. What that means is you can't have a Virgin Mary you can't have an Allah. You can't have a Buddha. You can't have yourself. You can't have your plant. You can't have your dog. You can't have your husband or your wife or your children and grandchildren. None of that is going to get you to heaven. And if Jesus said, you can't come to me unless God draws you to me, that's, a, that's, that's like, this is an invitation. But then Jesus turns around and says, but in order to get to God, you got to go through me. So if you see how God and Jesus partnered up, God is saying, hey, Ronnie, go over there to Jesus. And then I go to Jesus. And I'm like, oh. And then Jesus said, now you got to follow me and be obedient to me and, and pick up your cross and you must die to yourself in order to get back to God. And it's like, whoa, okay, so 
I can't be me no more. I got to become you. Well, how do I become you? Well, I'm going to give you the Holy Spirit because God brought you to me. Now that you're with me, I'm going to breathe on you. Now you have a way back to God. But guess what? Without those three, you're going to hell. That's what the Bible says. People think we are lunatics. So Jesus Christ is the only way to heaven? Well, according to the Bible, it says, I am the way, I am the truth, and I am the life. No one gets to the Father except through me. So this is what we believe. You don't have to believe it. But this is what we stand on. So we can't be afraid to say this because Jesus said, if you were ashamed of me, I will be ashamed of you. Do you realize Jesus had a mark of death on him from his birth? Exodus chapter 12, verse 29. Exodus chapter 12, verse 29. And this is going to blow your mind when you really get to see this and get an understanding of it. Exodus chapter 12, verse 29. And it came to pass at midnight that the Lord struck all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, from the firstborn of Pharaoh who sat on his throne to the firstborn of the captives who was in the dungeon, and all the firstborn of the livestock. The interesting thing is this kicked off, and if you go into when Jesus was born, I really want you to see how God is so omnipotent and omnipotent, omnipresent. They said, hey, O king, this Jesus was born, the Messiah, we're going to go see him. And the king said, well, let me know when you get to him. Because I want to go worship him too. He wanted to go kill him. So all of a sudden, there was this thing about killing all the firstborn male kids. Because he had figured, how do I get to Jesus? Here's the interesting thing that hit me the other night. If, if Jesus was to be killed before his time, there wouldn't be salvation. And I'm going to tell you why. And I don't know if I wrote it in here, but Jesus willingly had to go to the cross. If you read your Bibles, Jesus said, I give my life for you. It wasn't taken from me. I freely gave it in your place to die for you that I could pay the price. Because if I didn't pay for it, I don't own it. You have to really, I mean, you have to really start understanding this God in Jesus that you claim to serve. There's a lot of us that, you know, there's a lot of people in recovery and they don't drink and all that because they got in recovery, which is great. So it makes it kind of easier for them to live right with God as far as the drugs go. But what about the violence and the murder and the lying and the stealing and all the other crap that goes with who we are and then we say we're a Christian? I'm at the club. On, Sunday, on Saturday night, pounding them shots, shots, shots. I'm loaded and I come to church the next day and I'm like, praise the Lord. I made it to church today, but you smell like last night. Now, don't get me wrong. I want you in the church, but if you come to church like that every Sunday for a month in a, in a row, there's a problem. Because now you're in a problem. Now the Bible says a little leaven leavens the whole loaf. And then those of you that know me, hey, I'm going to expose it. Because that's us saving your life. Jesus said, I lay down my life for you that you may have life more abundantly. But in this life, you're going to have tribulation. 
but count it all joy because I have overcome the world. What he's saying is those things you're fighting, I, I overcame them for you. Oh no, Buddha didn't do that. You need to understand about these religions. Buddha, the big belly, that Buddha was a representative, the, the man who created Buddha was once on the hill and he never saw death. So one day he's looking, read it, go study it for yourself if you don't believe me. And he's seen the bird fall to the floor and he went to look at the bird and the bird was dead. He didn't understand death. So he went on this journey to try to figure out what was going on in the world because he didn't understand this. And so he went and, st and started to think about life and, and the harmony and the compassion of what he knew because he didn't understand death. Allah was a man. He wasn't God. He was a man that died. A lot of Muslims know, they, they know we're, when we die, we got to do all these things so if we can do all these things to get to heaven, there was, if there's works that got to be involved. With Jesus Christ, it's like, no, you just come to me and give your life to me and follow me and you'll have eternal life. You can't buy this. You can't earn this. It even says it in the Bible. It's a free gift. So we have to understand who are we following? Who are we representing? Do you realize Jesus had a mark of death on him from his birth? Exodus 29. Even though his death would bring salvation, his time of death had a time. John chapter 7. John chapter 7. We're almost done, brothers and sisters. John chapter 7, verse 6 to 8. John chapter 7, verse 6 to 8. John 7, 6 through 8. Then Jesus said to them, My time has not yet come, but your time is always ready. The world cannot hate you, but it hates me because I testify of it that its works are evil. See, he, he's letting them know, my time had not come yet. It, it hasn't come. But when you go over to, it says, then Jesus said unto them, my time is not yet come, but your time is always ready. Now, if you go into verse 10, it says, go ye up unto the feast. I go not up yet unto the feast, for my time is not yet fully come. It hadn't fully come yet. His time came as ours too shall come. John chapter 12, verse 23. John chapter 12, verse 23. John 12, verse 23. But Jesus answered them saying, The hour has come that the Son of Man should be glorified. We all have an hour. We're all going to stand in that hour that we have left. Are you going to be glorifying God? When your last hour of breath comes, are you going to be standing there, even if you got to be beheaded, and say, Lord, I love you. Today I'm going to be with you in glory. I raise my hands to you. Or if you're about to be in a burning house and you're going to burn alive, can you say, Jesus, give me the strength to endure as I go through this? Well, why would Jesus want me to die that way? Well, ask the apostles that were burned in oil, are beheaded, are stoned to death. Why do we think we're going to escape such a great death? Do you know the honor that came with that? We are, we, God, we just, we are God's workmanship created for good works. When you guys endure all that you go through mentally, physically, spiritually, and emotionally, that glory you give to God when you go, God, I might be going through this right now, but I love you, Jesus. 
And I'm going to endure this pain. I'm going to endure this trial as a good soldier. I don't like the way it feels, but I know I'm going to glorify you because you told me in this world I would suffer. When you start turning that stuff around, man, let me come to a close here before I make everybody get tired. Uh, we all, at the time of our salvation, got the same mark of death placed on us. I love this. All of you watching everywhere. This is you. This is me. These are the people that you know that are saved. Matthew chapter 5. Now, when I got all this, and they're all in the same chapter, that's, a, that's what's cool. Matthew chapter 5, verse 11, Matthew 5, 11. Blessed are you when they revile and persecute you and say all kinds of evil things you falsely for my sakes. Blessed, blessed, that means you're blessed. Blessed are you when they revile, talk bad, spit on you, talk, make you look like and sound like nothing. When you are reviled and persecuted and say all kinds of evil against you falsely because you're a Christian. Blessed are you. I, people don't get this. Man, you punk Christian. Man, you ain't nothing. Oh, man, whatever. <laughs> Yeah, you Bible thumper. God says we're blessed. Man, man I, I, I'm, I'm ashamed because, man, let me close my Bible. They might see me reading that word. Oh, let me, man, you know, I, I, Jesus said, if you're ashamed of me, I will be ashamed of you. Matthew chapter 10. Matthew chapter 10, verse 22. Matthew chapter 10, verse 22. And you will be hated by all for my name's sake, but he who endures to the end will be saved. Hold on, Jesus. I'm going to be reviled. I'm going to be persecuted. And I'm going to be hated because I'm a Christian? Huh. Let, 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 me, let me reevaluate this. I don't know if I can. Hmm. But everybody talks about us Christians like you guys act like you're so good. You guys act like you you you're the best. You're you're the one. Hold on a minute. You're talking bad about me. You're cussing me out. You're God says I'm blessed, but in my eyes, I don't feel that from you. And I'm working my way up to that point to say, praise the Lord. Talk about me all you want. Praise the Lord. I'll be persecuted for Jesus. Why not? He was persecuted. For, matter of fact, you ain't even persecuting me. You're persecuting the Jesus in me. And guess what? There's a lot of Christians that talk behind your back. You want to know why? Because you're actually walking the walk. And they know that you're walking the walk. They see Sister Nikki, Sister Sylvia, Bernadette, Paul, and all you on there. They're like, and you know what? They be acting like they like they so good, and because they don't go to the party, and because they dress correctly, and they go to church, and they feed them. What makes them so much better than me? They're only mad because you're actually walking this out, and that anger that they got is really a conviction, and they don't know how because they don't want to be talked about like you. They want the crowd to love them. And you, honestly, as you all know, I would love not to be on here every Tuesday and every Sunday. Not that I don't love you, but hey, I'm not looking for no friends. I'm going to study, I'm going to pray, and I'm going to study, and I'm going to pray with or without you. Because when I stand before God, I ain't going to be able to say, oh, Brother Paul, can you come stand over here with me? Um, hey, Marcos, uh, can, can, can you tell God what I was doing for you? Nah, I'm going to stand before that man by myself. I'm going to look around. I ain't going to see nobody. All you church members, saved by grace, I'm like, 
Ain't nobody there to support me, Lord. He's going to say, nah. It's ain't about them. What did you do for my sakes? What did you do to build my kingdom? What did you do to honor me? Matthew chapter, Matthew chapter 24. All this is in Matthew. I'm telling you, man, I was getting a kick out of this. Matthew 24, verse 9. Matthew 24, verse 9. Then they will deliver you up to tribulation and kill you. <laughs> and you will be hated by all nations for my name's sake. It didn't say because you walked as a Christian, you lived as a Christian, you prayed as a Christian. It said for his name's sake. You don't see nobody get a murder for praising Allah, for praising Buddha, for praising uh, President Biden, for praising Sylvester Stallone. You don't hear them praising any killing for any other praise but the name of Jesus. That's the only persecution that comes is when you say you are a Christian because you're saying you're Christ-like and then half the Christians that say they're Christians are fake Christians. So we go around saying we're believers. So when you go around saying you're a believer, somebody knows there's something different about you because Christians that are fake don't even understand they're a believer. Or if you really want to get really good at it, you can walk up and say, so who do you follow? I follow the way. What? Well, who is the way? I'm the way. Well, how are you the way? Because in the Old Testament, I was called the way. Well, what does that mean? Jesus is the way. I'm a part of Jesus. See, people don't know all this stuff. Wow, Ronnie, how do you know all this? Because I'm in the book. <laughs> That's the only answer I can give you. Chapter 10, last scripture for Matthew. Chapter 10, verse 36. Chapter 10, verse 36. Chapter 10, verse... Sister Betsy, God bless you. I was at... I was at the spot where I saw you again today. Thought I'd run across you. I should have called you. Matthew chapter 10, verse 36. And a, and a man... Ooh! Ooh! Here we go. And a man's enemies will be those of his own household. I can't believe my sisters, my brothers, my aunts, my uncles, my cousins, my grandkids, they all despise me. Well, you're walking like Christ. And they can't live on holy rock, man. Let me tell you something. I was crushed this weekend with some of the stuff that came out of my daughter's mouth. And when she said it, I just looked at her, not Vanessa. And I know I'm really like, and as a parent, it was one thing, but as a child of God, it was another thing. Because we all want our kids to get to heaven. And and and, and here's the sad thing, and, and I'm gonna end on this because I know we're going over time and there's just a little left, but please understand something. What we just read at the end, all Matthew. That's the hardest thing for a Christian to do. I'm going to be hated. I'm going to be talked about. I'm going to be persecuted. That all happens to me at my job. And I work at a place that that shouldn't be happening. But I remember my pastor saying to me, it's because you're living the walk. You're actually being the best Jesus you can be. And sometimes people that are compromising the world in their walk, they can't handle that. Let that be you. Let your walk be so close to this Bible that when you do fail, you get convicted, you know it, you feel it, you ask for forgiveness. 
If you're walking out in the world and somebody sees you doing something that's not Christ-like and they tell you about it, don't just cast them down. Take a time, a moment, and think, am I acting that way? Am I showing that? Am I speaking that way? For you to examine yourself, because the Bible tells you to. This is the last part of it. I thank you for your patience tonight. There was always a plan for one world order. Please pay attention to this. There was always a plan for one world order. It started with God and will end with the Antichrist, Satan. Be done away with by Christ at the return of Christ. So I need you to understand that God created the world for one world order when he put Adam to follow him. When the devil got involved, that brought chaos to the, to the world. The devil's going to put one world order in place for himself. It's happening right now, brothers and sisters. We are, this, this whole crypto dollar, this is all good. Your money's not going to be feasible anymore. Your credit cards, your bank cards, they all have those chips that's how stuff, a lot of places you go to, you can't even spend money. That's following under a one world currency. The war that's taking place right now, Russia and China are both communists. Communist means they're against the Christian belief. Everything is run one way. The problem with the world is so caught up in the sports, they're so caught up in the world and everything that's going on, that they're missing that the world is coming to this one world order. And Christians are going to have it the hardest because we're going to be the ones that are going to say, God warned us about this and this, we've, we've lost this and we're losing that. Now we're going to lose our homes. And a lot of people that are not strong are going to say, well, I guess I'm going to have to give in because i got to feed my kids. If you realize in the Old Testament, a lot of the people lived together because they couldn't afford to live with separately. So you need to really understand what's going on in the world and stop acting like stuff ain't going on. And if you don't know, then I would suggest that you start watching the right television, not the lying television. Search around and you'll see things that are taking place that we're being warned about. So this, what I'm showing to you, even the division that's happening in the church, this is very important. Because everybody in this church, you are a believer. You are a follower of Christ. When people ask me what denomination I am, I'm not a denomination. I am a follower of Jesus Christ. I am spirit-led by Christ, period. There is no title for this man right here but Christ and Christ alone. So I just, I pray that there was some education brought tonight for you guys to start watching what's going on around you. Start looking at how these denominations are. Start looking at how, I mean, you can get on YouTube and one, one spiritual man is talking about another spiritual man. This spiritual church is talking about that. There's so much negative about the church and the faith church and all, but yet when you look at some of the stuff that they're posting, it's like, but you're posting stuff too. Like, why are you even doing it? But then you're talking about each other. Why division? <laughs> Heavenly Father, I thank you for the, the patience. I, I thank you for the, the, the hunger that your sons and daughters had tonight, Lord, in this word. And I pray that you will Bring our children, our, our family members to the knees of their hearts that they can truly submit and repent and claim Christ with an open and loving heart and stop living contrary to the word of God. We know what it's like. We have been there. And we fight the same fight. It's not like we are set free of this flesh, of this mind, of this anger, of this jealousy, of these things of the flesh. But we fight the good fight of faith and we have a connection to the God that is inside of us called the Holy Spirit. And Jesus said with him all things are possible. Lord, 
save this world from itself. That you can have somebody besides us to come back and get. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, Pastor.